Hello and welcome to another player's guide to role playing. And this one is about meta. What is meta? Uh, how do we avoid it? Should we avoid it? Um, let's find out. Here's a nice uh, little scene. It's some kind of courtyard. Um, they are in the players are in the barn of sorts or in a warehouse or something. And um, let's suppose that they're trespassing and they want to get off this courtyard or grounds or some sort of island in a river. And uh, But there's two dwarves outside. They're hammering away um, and uh, they're not paying attention. They're not expecting anybody here. And um, of course, when the GM has explained this situation, the players will discuss amongst themselves. They will say, well, well, how are we going to approach this? Are we going to sneak past? Are we going to fight them? Um, they might ask some questions. What do the dwarves look like? You know, and um, then they will say, well, I, I don't know. Uh, my gear is not really good or I don't have a good enough fighting skill or my sneaking is really bad and my stealth. Uh, maybe we can blather our way through it because I have a blather talent. Or they will come up with all sorts of uh, solution. But the problem with this is that the players will come up with these solutions and not the characters. And that is meta. Um, three instances I want to talk about in this uh, short uh, video is in character versus out of character conversations, uh, meta knowledge, and um, rules lawyering, rules monkeys, things about rules. Um, so yeah, in character versus out of character conversations. Um, it's logical if you encounter a situation that you as a player want to discuss this with your fellow players and uh, you know decide on an, uh, an approach. But this situation isn't any different than any other situation your player, your character would be in. Um, you don't have to treat it differently than a combat or a social encounter or anything else. So there really is not a reason to go out of character. You can perfectly, uh, it's perfectly fine to discuss this with your fellow characters in character. You can say, oh, Oh no, there's two dwarves outside. What if we get caught? You know, uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm not. I'm not that much of a sneak. You know, uh, my knees hurt, and I don't know. We can do that stealth thing. That will make it clear to your fellow players that your character doesn't have a very high stealth skill, but you did it in game. You communicated the capabilities, the abilities of your character through your character, and. This will prompt the ar other characters to also respond in uh, in in character. Well, I uh, can maybe bullshit our way through it. I can perform, you know, something like that. I don't know what they what they're going to do. Are they going to s approach this situation? But there are very few um, conversations, discussions you. Uh, will have with your fellow players that you cannot do in character. It's way more fun to do it in character. Um, because not only is it fun to roleplay, um, it will also provide an opportunity for you to uh, get to know your character more and also for your fellow players to get to know your character more. You're Instead of just saying, uh, I don't have a high sneak skill, which is easy an easy thing to forget. You get your character saying, "Ah, oh, I'm very bad at sneaking," and because it's in an immersive situation, uh, it will st stick more. People, your your fellow players will remember it easily. Oh, he's he's that guy that can't really sneak. Um, so yeah, try to uh, to do that in character. It's way more fun. Um. Of course, uh, there will be situations where it is necessary to go out of character, simply because 
uh, you want to ask the GM uh, a question. Uh, you want to know, for instance, what do the dwarves look like? Uh, do they have any armor? Uh, what are they doing? How far are they? You know, all situational questions. Um, there is a way to do that in character. Um, of course, there isn't a, 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 a GM character in in the game, so you, you, it's not that your character is asking some metaphysical being praying to God or something. Um, but you know, uh, let's say uh, Celicia is uh, the first to uh, go get to the door. And um, and she's uh, she's you know uh, spied through the door and uh, seen the dwarves outside and established the situation. Now uh, the players want to know, indeed, uh, what do the dwarves look like and what are they wearing? Uh, are they uh, warriors or smiths or whatever? Uh, but uh, Groger, instead of uh, going out of character and asking the gym, he decides to ask Celicia. Oh, Celicia, what? How far are the dwarves? What are they wearing? Uh, what? Uh, what kind of weapons do we have? And of course, Celicia's player does not know this, but they, uh, if the gem is paying attention and is. Uh, any good, <laughs> they will have picked up on this and they will answer this for you. And they will say, well, Celicia, uh, you noticed this, or they, maybe they will hand them a note or a secret message or just say it out loud, it's up to the GM. But anyway, you, as a player, you've asked the GM information without uh, directly going out of character and ask, asking the GM, but in character, asking a fellow player for information that that, uh, that character would logically have. I mean, she's w uh, watching, she's looking through uh, a crack in the door or something. So she should know and see, uh, but that player does not have the knowledge, so the GM has to fill it in. So staying in character is always an option. There are very few um, situations where you have to really go out of character. One thing, of course, is when you're not certain about a rule. Let's say you want to sneak, uh, but you, you you don't know the rules for sneaking. So you can't really make a decision if you want to sneak or not. And then you might ask the gym, well, you know, can you please explain the rules? Because I have no idea. Um, rules. Rules lawyering is noted here. Um, normally the GM is the expert. And, uh, you know, they will explain... Uh, what the players can do and should do at certain points, uh, when not to roll dice and when to roll dice, and what the results mean. Uh, but very often you'll have players that also know uh, at least some of the rules, and uh, they will say, well, actually, I want to do this, and uh, because the rules say that if I roll uh, one or something, and that's very unimmersive, and that's when I... Uh, call rules lowering, um, arguing uh, that a rule is somehow in your favor or that it applies, and that instead of you know being creative with your role playing, you can just roll a one and then you have scot free or something. Um, that's not only boring, but it feels like cheating, and um, you're not the <laughs> you're not the GM. You're you're a player, so. If you really have a question about the rules, uh, wait for a break, a bio break, and then go back, you know, and say, well, in that situation I had some questions about that because I thought the rules said this or that. And then you can uh, discuss it and decide on what to do when such an occasion occurs again. So rules lawyering really breaks immersion and is, is straight up meta. It has nothing to do with the actual playing of the game, it's just, you know, two people arguing about what, how to interpret a rule or what to do with it. So the rule of thumb is there, uh, 
the, it's the GM it's the GM's job to deal with the rules and and to make the game flow and if, if you don't really agree with some decisions fine park it and discuss it when there's a break <coughs> um, another thing let's go to a different uh, scene let's say our party is an Abbey and um, they are attacked by vile red man and uh, Mol Oh, he's really excited because oh, I go, wow, Skaven! Oh my God, that's so cool! I mean, quick head taker and and, and the, the the great horn red and and I have a Skaven army! Wow! And by the way, this is my very poorly photographed Skaven army. Um, you know, <laughs> they all get really excited because they know all about Skaven, and Skaven are just the coolest thing ever. And, uh, of course, the GM knows this, and he put the Skaven in the game, especially for Maul, for Maul's player, because, uh, you know, he really likes them, and he's a fan of the Skaven. So, uh, immediately, Maul starts, uh, the, well, Maul's player starts spouting information about the Skaven, about the clan rats, and about all kinds of logos, and with the crossed triangles, and stuff, and claw marks, and gutter runners, and whatever and warpstone and that's cool i mean uh, kudos for him uh, for being so knowledgeable about skaven but these characters don't know shit about skaven so they don't know what they're what what these are these are just red red headed beastmen or mutants or abominations or whatever so, the decision uh, that most player will make is based, will probably be based on uh, his vast knowledge of the Skaven. He will maybe is he will sort of know what the Skaven warriors are capable of. He will probably assume that there are more. Um, he will. Uh, speculate about why they are here and not just speculate as a character but speculate well there might be warpstone here or there might be something here or is the place is tainted so immediately uh the gm realizes he made a mistake because it derails his plot and this is supposed to be some kind of unknown weird threat and instead of it the players know all about it and they Past, the players sort of passed that knowledge on, quote unquote, uh, to their characters. So that's not really a fun situation. So, um, yeah, it's tough to bite your lip when you have a lot of knowledge about a situation, about a location, about a, a race, uh, a thing, or uh, magic, or whatever. Um, it's it's tough to bite your lip, but it's more fun to bite your lip because, for all you know, um, the other players are playing Worm for the first time and they have no concept of Skaven whatsoever and they don't know anything. Um, and in any case, the characters don't know about Skaven. So, people that do not know what a Skaven is will react very differently uh, to the situation. Um, so the role playing will be off, will be skewered, will be uh, not what the player characters would do. So, yeah, that's meta knowledge, and it, it's a tricky thing to handle. Um, the best thing I can do is uh, give you advice to always bite your lip. Um, a quick question uh, to your play to your fellow players. Oh. Uh, I know what this is. Do you know what this is? No. Oh, okay. Well, I won't tell you because I, won't I don't want to spoil the fun. Uh, or uh, if you want to uh, uh, make it clear that you know what this is. Because sometimes this can also be uh, convenient or handy for your GM to know. If, oh, yeah. I mean, in this case, he set it up for him, so he probably knows. But, um, yeah. So, meta knowledge. Bite your lip. Uh, because um, if you know a secret, um, your character doesn't, and uh, uh, 
it's a lot of fun to get your character to find out the secret. I mean, it's sort of a Columbo thing. <laughs> yeah, uh, have your find a way to uh, let your character find out that these are not just beast men, red-headed beast men or or uh, mutants, but an actual sentient race of red people. So yeah, that's a uh, that's an interesting way to approach that. Meta knowledge, uh, bite your lip, rules lawyering, don't do it, wait for a bio break. And in character versus out, out of character, try to do the discussions, uh, strategies, um, looking over your character sheet, try to do that in character as much as possible. Um, yeah, that's it for today. It was uh, maybe a somewhat shorter one. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have any ideas or suggestions for this series or for the quick tip series or anything, uh, yeah, just leave a comment and I will catch you in the next one. Bye bye.